it's Julia. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking all about post-travel recovery. So if you've been watching my vlogs this summer, you know that recently I was just traveling for about two and a half weeks. I was in Texas for about five days visiting my boyfriend, so that was mostly a vacation. I did have to work from Texas some of the days and then in Puerto Rico I was leading a disaster relief trip so that was a work trip and then I spent a few days in Miami visiting my grandma on the way home so I was gone about two and a half weeks and for me comparatively to the rest of my travel histories that's relatively short but it is a long time for the average person to be gone and Honestly, for me, now that I work full time and I have a routine, like it's a long time for me too. So today I just wanted to share them with you and talk about how to recover well from travel, how to come back, how to bounce back, um, and how to start thriving again. <laughs> because honestly, it doesn't matter how fun your trip was, it was probably exhausting, especially if it was a work trip, you're probably really tired. So it's important to be intentional about that following time. I'm not just like go, go, go back into the next thing because that's when we get burnt out and, and exhausted. and confused as to why we're burnt out and exhausted. <laughs> so I'm gonna share with you some of the things that I do when I come home from a trip and just keep in mind, I'm a more introverted person so being around people makes me really tired. So if you're not like that and some of these tips don't resonate with you, just keep in mind, maybe you're just not like me and we're a little different and that's okay. So you can adjust everything I'm saying to meet your needs and to meet who you are. All I ask is just be honest with yourself about what you really do need and what really would help you and maybe be open to trying new things if your old ways aren't working for you. Okay, let's get into it. About to leave, already packed. The first thing that I try to do, and I've noticed this recently, that this is really important, especially the older I get. <laughs> um, and this is very hard, but that is to schedule a rest day into your travel itinerary. And seriously, this is hard, especially if you're doing weekend travel, it's impossible, you can't make it happen. But if you're doing longer travel, it's really important to try and make this happen. And Betty and I, my roommate, we did this for Peru. We went to Peru back in April for about eight days and we chose to come home on a Saturday morning instead of coming home on a Sunday night. And so we had essentially almost two days to recover from our long trip. And at first we thought, man, are we like jipping ourselves? Like we could be in Peru two more days. But then when you get to the end of the trip, you're tired and you think, well, I've been in Peru about seven days. I feel prude out and I want to go home and just recover and sit on my couch before I have to go back to work and back to grind. And so that recovery time for us was so amazing and we did not regret it at all. And so anytime that it's possible to make that happen for yourself, I would choose that option. I would come home a little earlier um, and allow that processing time and that rest time because it really is so important. So if you can afford it um, from a time perspective, I would do it. This next tip is something I've just discovered, something Betty and I just started doing, and that is to make sure you have groceries in your house before you come home. I know what you're thinking, how do you possibly do that? Well, it takes some creativity and it takes some help from friends, and so this is how this all started. So Betty was recently in India for three weeks. She was leading inner healing trips for women in India, and I knew she was gonna be super tired and worn out when she got home. And Tell me if I'm wrong, but one of the worst things and last things you wanna do when you get home from traveling is go buy groceries. You get home and you're like, I have no food, this sucks, I have no energy, I don't wanna to go to the grocery store. So I bought Betty groceries before she got home and so she didn't have to worry about it and it was a game changer for her. And so when I was in Puerto Rico, she wanted to do the same for me, but since I had better internet access than she did in India, I thought, you know what, what I'll do is I'll just go online and order my own groceries and you can pick them up. That way I can pay for them and I can pick out exactly what I want. Um, and this was super awesome. So I just went on Kroger.com and did their click list. This isn't sponsored, just a fan, <laughs> but click list, basically you just order what you want online. There's pictures, you click on everything, you pay for it, and then it gives you, or you pick a time you wanna pick it up. So they do everything for you and you just pick it up. But luckily Betty went and picked it up for me and then she put everything away in the fridge. So when I got home at midnight on Sunday, I did not plan a rest day into my travel itinerary. So when I got home, I had food in my fridge and when Monday morning came, a casual six hours later, <laughs> I had food for the whole week and it honestly was such a game changer. Like we are never not doing that ever again because it made my life so much better. I didn't have to go grocery shopping for about a week after that. Really like a week and a half, like it was amazing. So, if you have Kroger near you, 
Kroger click list, check it out. If you have other grocery stores, I'm sure they have something similar where you can just order the groceries. If you don't have a friend or a husband or a family member that is available to go pick up the groceries for you, just go pick them up yourself. Like it's not that big of a deal. But the fact that you don't have to like walk around the store and pick everything up, like I, <laughs> I'm telling you, game changer, amazing. Come with me. I'm not really asking. This third tip is something that I took really seriously this last time around and I've been taking really seriously this summer and that is to be as low key as possible the following week or following days, however long you need from after you get back. And so for me it takes about a week so I tried not to make any crazy plans like I'm actually traveling like almost every weekend for the next six or seven weeks. So during the weekdays, I'm trying to be really intentional about just being low key. I told my friends the other day, I said, all I'm really trying to do is make yummy food at my house, go on walks around my neighborhood and go to the movies with my movie pass. <laughs> like that's all I'm really trying to do because those are just like calm, low key things that give me life and are fun for me, but they're not like exhausting. <laughs> and those are genuinely restful things for me. So. I know this can be hard because if you're like me and you're an American, then your worth is directly tied to your productivity and you're only as good as how many things you can do in a day, right? One of the biggest lies I think we've decided to believe as a society is that being busy is very important and desirable and something we should all brag about and strive for. No. The whole hustle culture right now, honestly, I'm here for it, I support it. But if work hard is in complete isolation from resting hard, then I honestly think it's in vain. You will be more productive and effective if you're resting as hard as you're working hard. So that week after you're traveling, even if it was a vacation, like I would be low key and I would limit your commitments and I would just work on recovering. You will be more effective and productive in the long run. Take my hand, we'll make it some I'd say do your laundry, unpack, and put your room and things back to normal as quickly as you can because that's gonna help you feel rested. That's gonna help you feel like you're back to normal, you're back home, you can rest, you don't need to feel bad, you're here. I feel like the longer your room is messy and your suitcase is on the floor, the more you just kind of feel stressed out. At least that's something I noticed this past week. So if you can do that as soon as possible, I would do that. Next, I would say take some time to process the experience that you just had, especially if it was kind of an emotionally exhausting one or something really exciting. Like write down, journal, or just sit there and think about it. Do whatever you want to do that fits your style. But what just happened while you were gone? What did you experience? How do you feel about it? Um, remember it, write it down, process through it. Organize your thoughts and your emotions. Um, and that will really help you kind of move forward and feel like, a good period on the experience that you just had. A lot of times we just let things wash over us and if it was emotionally exhausting, it can hurt us in the long run. So it's important to process, what was the experience? How did it affect me? How do I feel about it? I know that for some of you, you're like, oh my gosh, that's just too much touchy-feely, but try it, give it a try. See if you like it. This is what we waited for. After you've done that, I would encourage you to go sit with your friends, tell them about the experience you just had, share with them your stories, tell them about your trip, let other people in on the experience that you just had, especially since you've just processed through how you feel about it and you're good at talking about it. I would go go sit with friends, do something low key, invite them over, go to their house, um, and just share with them your stories. Back, eyes on the freeway. Kind of get organized for what's coming up. Even though I'm having a low key week right now, um, what's coming up at work, what's coming up in my personal life, what's coming up next, and just kind of think it through so I don't feel like everything is happening to me and I don't feel as overwhelmed. Like, I don't know what's going on, I'm not prepared, la la la, like it's just overwhelming. But look at the calendar, figure out what's going on, what's coming up next, do you need to do anything, do you need to prepare? Uh, I feel like just being super aware of what's next on your schedule and what's next coming up for your responsibilities Helps you rest better, I think, because you don't feel like, oh, there's so much unknown, I don't even know what I need to do and I'm ignoring it and it's daunting, you know? Those are some of my top tips and some of the best things that I do to recover well from traveling. I would love to know what you guys do. Do you guys have any tips or rituals or things that you always do every time when you come back from being gone for a while? Comment down below and let me know if you have anything you wanna add. If you have any questions for me, I would love to know. If you're not subscribed to my channel, I would love to have you. I post videos about travel, faith, 
and just living an authentic life. That's what I'm all about around here. My tagline is live a good story. So that's what I'm trying to do around here. If you want to be a part of that, I would love to have you. I post videos on Sundays and sometimes Wednesdays. So if you're confused, just hit the notification button and you won't have to worry about it. You'll always know when I have a new video. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you next time. Bye. And if you want it, come and get it. Cry